Hello everyone and welcome to designing and implementing an upper stage for Starship for use with interplanetary probes in Kerbal Space Program. Here we have some procedural tanks with the Skyforce V engine from Skyrora and these are kerosene and HTP engines. Now you would ask why would we use that? So that it would be cheap. This is the cheapest handling propellant combination that I thought would be viable and have enough specific impulse. And here we have a James Webb Space Telescope as our mock payload and the engines would actually look like this because they would be pressure fed engines because pressure fed engines are cheaper than gas generator engines so they really need really big nozzles there are detriments to this they are heavier and the tanks are heavier because they have to be high pressure but here you can see having mocked it up in Kerbal Space Program I start making it in Blender I'm not going to go through the entire Blender process but I'm going to show you the basic steps we ended up uh, starting out with two cylinders and we beveled the edges and then I added some more cylinders uh, for the struts and I ran struts between uh, those sort of rings around and here I'm using a cube uh, to be our engine brace to carry the engines which will be fairly large now I, I got some pushback on this design for this brace uh, during the stream this is all during a live stream and so coming up with the idea and putting it all together in Blender and then putting the textures on, bringing it through Unity and then bringing it into the game took about three and a half hours and then some testing took another hour. Uh, so that's the kind of times we're talking about. But I do have some tools and of course a lot of experience in trying to do this that speeds it up for me. So here I'm sort of placing the engine, but we do need to know how big the engine ought to be. I was aiming for an 85 kilonewton engine because that was the same as, as the Skyrora Vs, and they get about 306 seconds ISP. Uh, we need pressure fed engines though, so we need a completely different model like I showed you. The Skyrora is really tiny, and the engines that we're going for will be very big because of the low chamber pressure. And so I get the stats here. Uh, we actually get 310 seconds of ISP there. It's probably going to be really less than that, but I'll go with 310 for now. And here the number I'm pointing at is the mass flow at the end of the nozzle, which determines the size of the nozzle given that I've already chosen to have an expansion ratio of 80. So I've decided that the throat, which is the top part that you see there, that's the area of the throat, uh, will be 80 times less than the area of the end of the nozzle which I represented by another cylinder at the bottom and now I'm sort of creating a nozzle between them and yep it is a hefty sort of thing and then the chamber itself uh, expands out from the throat so it's uh, basically double the size uh, about double the diameter so it looks something like that and you can see it looked a lot like the engine that we had in Kerbal Space Program, the AG-10-137 which was the pressure fed engine on Apollo that was the service propulsion engine and that makes sense because it's doing the same job basically so uh, here I am I decided to before I duplicate the engine strut that uh, engine platform to unwrap the textures and I decided that we didn't need these surfaces here that's just taking up more texture space so getting rid of those because they're hidden inside the body of the tanks and so some unwrapping so that when I duplicate it I don't have to take up more texture space with the parts and then running some pipes I have a tool this uh, fluent there are many different tools that can help you make pipes in blender that's a very popular thing uh, so uh, uh, they're very useful, but those are pay-for add-ons to simplify things. In my video on how to make engines in Blender, I showed how to make pipes the long way, uh, in addition to all the other things for engines. So if you look at that video, you can see how the engines are made without any of these additional tools. But make, using the tools, of course, simplifies things and speeds things up. So, uh, running a little wire there and uh, turning it into a pipe. Now the impetus for this was a Twitter thread with people contemplating using Starship as a cheap way of getting probes out to Uranus and Neptune. So that's the goal. Basically Uranus and Neptune without using a Jupiter slingshot. Right? Because to use a Jupiter slingshot you have to wait about every 12 years or so. Something like that. That's how long Jupiter's orbit is. So it'll get into alignment with Uranus and Neptune after some area around 12 years. So that's a long time to wait to send probes out to Uranus and Neptune. So instead, uh, we could use Starship to launch direct to Uranus and Neptune. That takes longer. The trip itself takes longer, but you can send more missions that way. And if you can launch cheaply, of course, then that's great. 
uh, to launch cheaply though, you need a cheap upper stage. So, because it's disposable in this case, especially if you're going to eject something out all the way to Uranus and Neptune, you're not getting that stage back. So, we need some cheap stage, and this is the goal of this particular stage, to be a cheap ex disposable stage. Uh, of course, a lot of people think about putting EUS, the stage on top of SLS, inside Starship. It's feasible, uh, size-wise, barely. Uh, but, of course, EUS is, is expensive. It's got expensive engines. They're hydrogen and oxygen, which are cryogenic. Um, in this case, these are not cryogenic fuels. Uh, you might think about using hypergolic fuels. Uh, those are also more difficult to handle than kerosene and HTP. Um, HTP is just uh, high-test peroxide, so it's, it's toxic, but it's easier to handle, and people are more familiar with it than uh, hydrazine or uh, nitrogen tetroxide. So. And kerosene is just kerosene. So yes, there's our stage, and I'm, I'm deliberately trying to make it as sort of like a like a water tank as possible, you know, uh, SpaceX style. <laughs> so uh, I import RCS blocks from a different model, so I didn't do that those by hand, but I decided that those little RCS things needed to be rotated away from the pipes. So I moved those so that it didn't look like they were blowing at the pipes. And uh, here we are looking to add the helium tanks to pressurize the main tanks. Because it's a pressure fed thing, it needs the helium uh, to push the fuel down once the fuel is depleted. So we have those helium tanks. I didn't really uh, figure out the size of the tanks this time, I just did it for looks. So this is one thing where I didn't calculate ahead of time. But otherwise, of course, the size of the tanks were mocked up in Kerbal Space Program first. Uh, so we know what we need and the goal is to use up the capacity of Starship in its nine engine configuration that it has now. So uh, these days I guess um, Starship is going to have six vacuum engines and three sea level engines and so this is baseline for that. Otherwise this wouldn't work, it'd be a little bit too big. We could underfuel it but it wouldn't be efficient. I guess I could just rescale it down a bit. So anyway, we are just a uh, making a little interface there for the pipes, and that's just a cube that has a, a subdivision surface to round it off a bit. And then, time to export it. There's two parts here, there's the engine part, and then there's the tank part. And the meshes all have their own materials, but you can only have one material per mesh, so you have to remember that. That's the Kerbal Space Program limit, not a Unity limit. In Unity, you can have multiple materials on a single mesh, but in Kerbal Space Program, you can't. Sorry, uh, nobody during the stream told me that the Substance Painter window was not being captured properly. I blame my audience. Uh, but uh, So this is Substance Painter, and I'm applying the materials on the nozzle, just selecting them. You can see I have a selection of different materials. I can tweak them using the sliders on the side to make them look right, and of course we can layer them as well. They act like layers, just like in a Photoshop-like program. And then we export them in whatever resolution I think would be best. Uh, you can see I've chosen different resolutions for different uh, meshes, because if it's a really small mesh, you don't need a very high resolution texture. Whereas the big uh, meshes, you want the higher resolution stuff, so you can optimize for that. And so here we have the little helium tanks, and we make them a uh, sort of carbon composite thing and scale it appropriately and uh, the way I unwrapped the textures in Blender was the lazy way uh, and that was the smart UV method in Blender. Of course if you didn't use Substance Painter you would not want to do that because that would come up with a lot of seams, but one of the reasons people pay for Substance Painter <laughs> is because it uh, can deal with those and so you can do a lazy unwrap and still get good results, and that increases the speed of your ability to make these parts. So that's what people pay for. When it comes to these tools, what people pay for is the ability to do things faster, basically. So anyway, there I am getting ready to export the tanks. Now I had put a, a collider on the engine, and that was a simple cone, and I gave it its own material so I could hide that material in Substance Painter. But uh, for the tanks, I just rely on the fact that the two main tanks are already uh, proper as far as being a collider. And so I'm going to just use them as colliders without making a separate collider. 
Uh, here I've imported the files into Unity. That's this program. This is what will get into Kerbal Space Program. I'm not going to explain how to get part tools in here because frankly I wouldn't even know if I could do it again. But here we're making the materials. So each of the texture pairs, there's a, a, the main map and then the normal map, they have to be turned into a material for, for Unity. And then we apply the material. First of all, we have to make sure that they are KSP materials. Bump specular is what I use. And then we slide those into the fields on the part to make sure that they are assigned to the part. You can see the conical collider that I have on the engine there. That The mesh of that has to go away, so we just delete the mesh renderer. And we add a collider to it. And now I have to make the gimbal axis. And you have to remember that it's going to be the green, uh, not the green, the Z blue arrow that is the thrust arrow. So uh, we have the gimbal at the top and then the thrust transform at the bottom. And then the engine part itself is a child of the gimbal and then thrust transform is a child of the engine. So it's arranged like that. The green arrows are for the RCS thrust. So the, the engine thrust is blue arrow the RCS thrust is green arrow, and we have 12 RCS thrusters, so it's a little bit tedious to place all these in the right locations for the RCS thrusters. I do regret having such small RCS thrusters later on. It does make it very uh, slow to turn, but we will test that and everything. So you can see they're all, they all have to be called RCS thrusters, exactly, uh, RCS thruster, no plural, exactly like I have it there. And then that's actually the most tedious thing to deal with here. Uh, we do not have solar panels. This would not recharge itself. It is just used for transfer. It would send the thing out and that's it. Next step is to actually write the configuration files. And normally I copy the configuration of a similar part like a tank for the tanks or in this case this is the engine. And then I just type in the changes that I need to make. And so that's what you see me doing here. I asked my audience during the live stream for a suggestion for a part name. It was an 85 kilonewton engine and so and it was similar to the AJ-10 so somebody said AJ-85 and I went with it but uh, somebody else noted that when SpaceX make the part in in-house and AJ is a reference to Aerojet which is a different company so if we're hypothesizing SpaceX making this part it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that they would call it AJ-85 but you never know. Anyway uh, for the stage, nobody gave me a suggestion, so I went with a very Elonish name, uh, Star Stage 1. And there will be a Star Stage 2, but we'll get to that in a different video. So th this is the Realism Overhaul configuration, where we changed the fuels from liquid fuel to an oxidizer to kerosene and HTP, and we get all the correct information in. The engines do not throttle. Uh, they are like the service propulsion system in that respect, like Apollo, and they're about Apollo size as well. Uh, they will have multiple ignitions and this is the textures unlimited file there that I was looking at uh, That gives the shininess to the part and with that we uh, Send it into Kerbal Space Program. It's not as shiny as I wanted to it to be so we're gonna pump those numbers up in the textures unlimited file and There are the engines um, of course you have to get the placement nodes, right? Those are things you can use the cursor in blender to determine the location of you just shift right click and place the blender cursor in the right location. I was trying to adjust the masses of the tanks because I failed to note that when I initially was in Kerbal Space Program and I made the tanks too heavy. So looking at the procedural tanks, I added a hefty bit of margin uh, to what the procedural tanks had. I included the separate helium tanks and all that business and I added a 10% margin on top of that on top of the high pressure tanks. We cheated into orbit uh, in order to test out the RCS and the engines. Uh, check out the engine plume which I just copied from a different engine and it was uh, looking okay enough for me. So that is our stage right there. But I had to uh, exit the game and come back in with the mass changes before we put it on Starship. So this is it going on Starship with the nine engines as you can see. And uh, there it fits I put James Webb Space Telescope, but that's not really... We wouldn't be sending that out to the outer planets. We would be sending some probe, like uh, maybe a lander or something. My baseline was trying to send five tons. Now, mind you, 
having a single stage do more than 7,000 meters per second is very unusual. Well, uh, except for like a centaur stage, which already has a high specific impulse, it's very unusual. So, this isn't an optimal setup, you might want two stages, but this is cheap. The goal for this is cheaper. I know uh, I've seen Twitter threads of people trying to make uh, use a Raptor engine for an upper stage, and yeah, that might get you better payload capacity, but it won't be cheap. And of course, with one large engine, there is no redundancy for engine failures in that case. The problem with the Raptor engine really is its high thrust, which means it imparts high g-forces to the payload, and these are sensitive scientific payloads, so we actually want the minimum amount of thrust that we can get away with uh, for these sort of payloads. This is a fairly long stage, it's about like an EUS, it's just denser because we have the kerosene and HTP, and it's about the same mass and the same kind of burn time, and the engines at 85 kilonewtons each have uh, just a little bit less thrust. So here we are moving out of the bay, Starship, per the test, was able to get into orbit successfully and reserve some fuel, though uh, I think our launcher was not using the updated engines, so uh, I think we were missing two, we were using 30, or 29 instead of 33 or something like that. So, but you can see I checked back here, we have 500 meters per second, but this is rotating for some reason and not holding the node uh, that we have there, and that is probably because James Webb Space Telescope is imbalanced because we tested the stage out before and it was balanced, it was holding and it wasn't using any pitch yaw roll. So um, this is probably because of the payload. So anyway, that is not a problem with the stage. I'll continue working on this and I'll have another stage and I'll release it eventually. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments and suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.